to the commencement operations of 800 megawatt of Sri Damodaram Sanjeevaya Thermal Power Station at Krishna Patnam and completion of 800 megawatt of Narla Tata Rao Thermal Power Station at Vijayawada. My government has formulated a proactive policy with respect to reverse pumping technology, which enables natural energy storage and which supports in mitigating the intermittency associated with renewable energy. With the twin objective of safeguarding the distribution utilities and ensuring that free power is made available to the farmers in a hassle-free manner, my government is installing smart meters for agricultural, agriculture connections and is also finalizing plans for providing agricultural subsidy through DBT mode directly to farmers. Now about industry innovation and infrastructure. It's a moment of pride that my government successfully organized Global Investor Summit at Vishakapatnam. On 3rd and 4th March 2023, the International Congregation was highlighted the best efforts of the government to attract investors. The two-day event demonstrated not only the credibility of the government, but also the faith reposed by national international investors in the state leadership. The phenomenal response of the investors from 25 countries and from 30 corporate giants, as well as the host of others to invest in the state, itself is a testimony for a conducive business-friendly environment in the state. In all, 378 memorandums of understanding were signed during the summit with a total commitment of 13.42 lakh crores and a generation of over 6 lakhs jobs across 16 key sectors. A significant investment commitment of Rs. 9,57,112 9, crores with a potential employment generation of 1.80 lakh persons was in the renewable energy sector. The other major promising sectors include petrochemicals, IT and IT-enabled sectors, mining industries and others. My government is committed to capitalize on the natural and human resources available in the state and make the city of Vishakapatnam as an industrial hub of the state. The advantages that Andhra Pradesh has showcased are the availability of robust infrastructure, skilled manpower, inherent advantages such as 974-kilometer-long coastline, abundant mineral resources, and so forth. To achieve rapid industrialization of the state through competitive industrial policies, my government has introduced the AP Industrial Development Policy 2020-2023 identifying 10 thrust areas to propel economic growth with manufacturing as the high priority sector that would create large scale employment. 69 large and mega industries under the active implementation with an investment of rupees 1.3 lakh crores and to provide employment to 1.5 lakh persons. Most of the units are likely to commence production in, a, in the very near future. My government is granting all permissions through the single desk system within 21 days for establishment and running of industries. Friends, the proactive policies have resulted in Andhra Pradesh securing first position consecutively for three years in the ease of doing business rankings. I also wish to emphasize that rankings were based on feedback from the stakeholders. To nurture the growth of MSMEs, my government has decided to support and monitor the implementation of one-time restructuring of MSME loan scheme under an umbrella program, Dr. Vyasar Navodayam. MSME cluster development program is facilitating the creation of state-of-the-art infrastructure facilities in the MSME sector. 
1.52 lakh units have been established with an investment of rupees 19,115 crores, providing employment to over 13.63 lakh persons. Under MSME restart program, rupees 2,086 crores worth invents, incentives were given to 23,236 MSMEs so far. Andhra Pradesh has improved its exports, perf exports performance from rank 7 in 2019-20 to rank 4 in 2021, with an increase in exports to USD 16.8 billion in financial year 2021. The state contributes 5.8 percent to national exports, and we aspire to double our exports by 2030, increasing our share to 10 percent. Now about strategic infrastructure. My government is planning to develop Andhra Pradesh as a logistic hub and gateway to Southeast Asia. The state is keen to leapfrog economic development by encouraging industries in the vicinity of ports and harbors. We have six operational ports, and we are also developing four more ports at Ramayapatnam, Bhavanapadu, Kakinada, and Machilipatnam, and also constructing nine fishing harbors across the state in two phases. My government is striving to operationalize three major industrial corridors, Vizag Chennai Industrial Corridor, Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor, and Hyderabad Bangalore Industrial Corridor. The corridor's develop development will strengthen connectivity to the existing industries and facilitate setting up of new ones. Now about rural and urban connectivity. My government is committed to ensuring connectivity to all unconnected habitations through AP Rural Road Project with an estimated cost of rupees 4,994 crores. 992 kilometers of BT roads were laid at the cost of 502 crores under PMGSY during the last one year. My government is planning to complete 174 roads and 21 bridges of length of 1,236 kilometers during this year. Roads and Building Department has taken up 5,181 kilometers length of road works, which comprises of new connectivity, improvement repair, improvement repairs pertaining to all categories of roads with an expenditure of rupees 2,173 crores. Further, with an assistance from New Development Bank, 1,260 kilometers of road have been taken up with an estimated cost of rupees 3,013 crores to provide double lane connectivity from district headquarters to mandal headquarters and mandal headquarters to adjoining mandal headquarters from the existing single lane intermediate lane roads which are having traffic intensity of more than 2,000 passenger carrying units. Now, skilling and employment. Emphasizing on the importance of employment generation, my government developed a system to meet the occupational needs of public and private sector as well. The government has passed a legislation reserving 75% of the employment for locals in the industries and factories that are set up in the state. Further, in the last 45 months, my government has provided 2.13 lakh permanent jobs, 45,871 contract jobs, and 3.72 lakh outsourcing other jobs. A total of 6.31 lakh jobs. The salaries of 3.08 lakh outsourcing honorarium based employees were enhanced. All contractual employees were also provided with minimum time scale. For enhancing employability skills of students to make them job ready, placement linked and industry relevant short term skill development courses are offered. The key target is providing training under skill development for students and unemployed with substantial enhancing of the placement rate. 
towards this direction in order to design the courses as per demand and to ensure 75% of placements. My government has proposed to establish a skill university and 25 world-class multi-skill centers in 25 parliamentary constituencies under YSR multi-skill development centers in two phases. For creation of rural employment, 69.90 lakh wage seekers belonging to 42.66 lakh households were provided wage employment incurring an expenditure of rupees 6,315.13 crores under Manregas. Of this, an amount of rupees 3,869.51 crore was towards unsealed wage component and rupees 2,312.09 crore was towards skilled wages and material components. 73,725 households completed 100 days of wage employment during financial year 2022-23. Andhra Pradesh is the first state in the country which has undertaken a comprehensive resurvey after 100 years using the most modern and advanced survey technologies in 17584 villages through the through the YSR Jagananna Shashwata Bhuhakku Mariyu Bhuraksha Pathakam Landowners' title security is ensured by providing Buhaku Patram and securing boundaries by planting Bhuraksha survey stones, free of cost. My government is committed to complete the project by December 2023. So far, Shashwata Buhaku Patralu were distributed to 4 lakh 38,899 property owners in 2,000 villages. This admirable initiative has received wide acclaim from Niti Aayog. Marching ahead with the policy of decentralization, my government has taken up a historical move through restructuring of districts, increasing the number of districts to 26, the revenue divisions to 76, and the police divisions to 108. This has made the administration more accessible to the common man. This massive transformative initiative has been conceptualized for the first time since 1956. This district reorganization move has started showing dividends and evoked satisfaction amongst all sections of the society across the state. With a genuine intention to help people, my government has been implementing Spandana program to redress the public grievances with high priority and more importantly, with a humane face. There is positive feedback in the way the citizens' grievances are being redressed and this program is widely acclaimed with accolades from Niti Ayo. With an aim to create awareness among public, public on various welfare schemes being implemented by the government, my government has initiated Gadapa Gadapakumana Prabhutvam program. Under this program, Under this program, MLAs and public representatives visit every household across the state in their respective jurisdiction. The issues identified at the village level during their visit are being addressed at village and ward secretariat level on priority. And a separate fund of rupees 3,000 crores has been earmarked for the purpose. <coughs> Ensuring even faster and effective service delivery at the doorsteps of the household. We have recently initiated home delivery of essential commodities to all ration card holders through 9,260 mobile units. It's a matter of pride that Andhra Pradesh has made improvement in the recent past in controlling the crime rate, reducing violence, and thereby maintaining harmony amongst all sections of the population. 
innovative policing measures have primarily contributed to this peaceful environment. My government is committed to ensure safety and security to women in the state. As a land landmark initiative, Disha Bill has been brought out to take quick and stringent action against those involved in the crime against women. Now I will come to the concluding part. I wish to conclude by expressing my happiness with the impactful interventions and the good governance practices under implementation by my government yielding commendable results. Inclusiveness and sustainability of the state progress will continue to be the top priorities of my government. And we will continue to strive hard to make the state more robust, resilient, fulfill the aspirations of the people. Jai Hind! Shubhaname Janakana mana adhina ayaka jayage bharat bharat
Good morning to all. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the State Legislature, it's a great honor and privilege to address this joint session of both the houses of Andhra Pradesh State Legislature on the occasion of the budget session 2023-24. It is almost four years since the journey to fulfill the hopes of more than five crore people of this state had begun under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy. Relentless efforts have been made during all these years in ensuring that governance is more inclusive and transparent. It is indeed heartening to share the way aspirations of the underprivileged, marginalized, and vulnerable groups have been fulfilled through the implementation of several pro-poor initiatives. Ever since my government was formed in 2019, we have embarked, embarked on an inclusive governance model under the broad welfare umbrella of Navaratnalu, moving in, in sync with the global development agenda of sustainable development goals, the government has carved a well-knit development and welfare framework of Navaratnalu implicitly adopting the concept of leave no one behind. Implementation of this integrated welfare program where all schemes of the government have been mapped with SDGs has facilitated direct benefit transfer by the click of a button into the bank accounts of the beneficiaries without any leakages or discrimination on any ground whatsoever and with transparency under various schemes. New Age Institutions for Effective Service Delivery. My government has recognized the importance of ensuring timely and transparent public service delivery to various sections of the population, which include the hitherto neglected classes of SCs, STs, BCs, minorities, farmers, and women. 15,004 village ward sachivalayas across the state are instrumental in ensuring effective and transparent service delivery. During these 45 months, my government has extended financial assistance of about 97 lakh crores under various programs with an aim of improving living standards of the people regardless of caste, creed, religion, gender, and political affiliation under the ambit of Navaratnalu. Further, for more effective identification of beneficiaries, my government is conducting mandatory social audit before the launch of any scheme. The village ward volunteers deployed in rural urban areas for delivering government services and welfare schemes at the doorsteps of all eligible households have proved extremely effective. Now, economic growth. The economy of the state continues its encouraging trend. The ad advanced estimates for 2022-23 indicate an overall growth of 16.22% at current prices. All the three sectors of the economy, namely agriculture and allied industries and services are projected to show significant growth performance. The industry and service sector, services sectors have helped the economy to register higher overall growth. The per capita income of Andhra Pradesh at current prices have moved up from Rs. 1,92,517 in 2021 to Rs. 2,19,518 with an impressive growth of 14.02%. 
the effective policy the effective policy formation and implementation by my government has ensured a year on year gsdp growth growth rate at 11.43% in 2021 which is the highest amongst all the states now quality education nurturing future generations Dr S Radha Krishnan has said and I quote the end product of education should be a free creative man who can battle against historical circumstances and adversity adversities of nature unquote education is most effective resource to transform the younger generations my government is utilizing every possible opportunity to develop the future generation to be globally competitive in all aspects towards this endeavor utmost importance is being given to education through several path breaking interventions these include strengthening of the existing infrastructure in all government schools streamlining and upgrading the mid day meal program implementing curricular reforms in consonance with the national education policy 2020 and setting up of an effective regulatory and monitoring mechanism i would like to briefly highlight some of the interventions of my government that are contributing to quality learning outcomes with an objective of modernizing and strengthening infrastructure in schools and thereby making environment more conducive for learning my government is implementing manabadi nadu nedu nadu nedu initiative since 2021 15717 schools have been taken up for revamp under the phase 1 with a financial outlay of rupees 3669 crores under this initiative amenities under 12 categories such as toilets with running water electrification with fans and tube lights drinking water supply furniture for students and staff etc are made available in schools under the second phase which is in progress 22344 schools are on 280 other educational institutions under this initiative with an estimated total cost of rupees 16021.67 crores to make sure that poverty of the parents does not come in the way of educating their children my government has supported 44.49 lakh mothers in sending their 84 lakh children to schools under jagananna amma odis program my my, my government has so far spent 19617.60 crores under this initiative out of the amount of rupees 15000 being given annually to each mother rupees 1000 is earmarked for toilet maintenance fund and another rupees 1000 for school maintenance fund which is released directly to the parents committees in the government schools digital learning has been the cornerstone of educational reforms in the state with an aim to making students from socially deprived backgrounds globally competitive my government has distributed 5.2 lakh tabs worth rupees 690 crores the tabs are preloaded with byju's content and they have been distributed to 4.60 lakh students of 8th class and 60000 teachers of government and aided schools free of cost to further bolster up our efforts in this direction we are planning to introduce interactive flat panels from class 6 and above the panels are planned to inst- to be installed in 30213 classrooms in 5800 schools with an aim to minimize the school dropouts and to improve gross enrollment ratio 
my government has distributed student kits well before reopening of the schools under Jagananna Vidya Kanuka. These kits consist of all the required textbooks, uniforms, shoes, etc. required for the students. My government has spent Rs. 2,368 crores since 2021, benefiting 47.4 lakh students of classes 1 to 10 in all the government and other government-aided schools in the state. The government has recognized the importance of nutrition for the healthy future of the children. To address the issue of malnutrition amongst children, the revamped midday meal program with additional nutritious food items in the menu in the name of Jagananna Goru Mudda is being implemented in the state for the children of classes 1 to 10, covering 43.26 lakh children. The amount incurred so far on this program by my government is rupees 3,239 3, crores. Realizing the importance value attached globally for English in the modern times and to equip our students for 21st century skill demands, my government is actively working to provide quality English medium education to all and thereby fulfill the aspirations of the parents from poorer sections. Bilingual textbooks, English labs have been introduced to achieve this aim. My government has implemented several curricular reforms from the academic year 2020-21 with a greater focus on foundational learning and numeracy. The textbooks from classes 1 to 7 have been redesigned with greater focus on an activity-based curriculum. Affiliation of government schools to CBSC and the capacity building of teachers are some of the other key reforms initiated. Keeping in view of the affiliation of all government schools to CBSC, the textbooks for class 8 have been adopted from NCERT and customized with local content and printed in bilingual, both in Telugu and English. Sorry. I have some throat irritation, I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> to ensure that all the students passing out of high schools continue their education and don't drop out, my government has decided to establish at least two junior colleges per mandal across the state, out of which one shall be exclusively for girls. My government is giving utmost importance to higher education. Andhra Pradesh is the only state in the country to take complete responsibility for providing higher education to 100% of its eligible students free of cost without any financial burden on their families. The government has initiated path-breaking reforms to transform the youth of the state into enlightened and employable global citizens ready to tackle future global challenges. With a view to ensuring that higher education is accessible even to children of disadvantaged sections, my government is reimbursing total fees under Jagananna Vidya Dinena. Under the scheme, the amount is transferred directly on a quarterly basis into the accounts of such mothers whose children pursue ITI, Polytechnic, Degree, Engineering, B Pharmacy and other courses. So far, rupees 9,249 crores have been reimbursed to 24.75 lakh beneficiaries. Through Jagananna Vasati Divena, we are providing allowance up to rupees 20,000 for hostel and mess charges. Under the scheme, amount is credited direct directly into the accounts of mothers whose children are pursuing higher education. So far, an amount of rupees 3,366 crores have be, has been dispersed to 18.77 lakh students under the scheme. Effective implementation of equitable and inclusive schemes like Jagananna Vidya Divena 
ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಗಣನ್ನ ವಸತಿ ದೀವೇನ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಎನ್ರೋಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ರೇಷಿಯೋ ಇನ್ ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ದ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಬಲ್ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅಟ್ ಕುರುಪಂ ಜೆ ಎನ್ ಟಿ ಯು ಗುರಜಾಡ ಅಟ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರಂ ಆಂಧ್ರ ಕೇಸರಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಟ್ ಒಂಗೋಲ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ಕಿಟೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೈನ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಟ್ ವೈ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಡಪ್ಪ ಕ್ಲಸ್ಟರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಟ್ ಕರ್ನೂಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಕಾಲೇಜಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಕ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಮೈ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೋಟಾ ಇನ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೋಟಾ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಅದರ್ ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಮೆರಿಟೋರಿಯಸ್ ಪೋರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡೆಡ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೂಲ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಗುಡ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕೀ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಹೆಲ್ದಿ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಡೆನಿಸ್ ವೈಟ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಕೋಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಪ್ರೆಷಿಯಸ್ ಎಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರೆಕಾಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ರಿಷಿಯೇಟ್ ಅಂಟಿಲ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಅನ್ಕೋಟ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಟು ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಚೀವಿಂಗ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಕವರೇಜ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೀ ಪ್ರಯಾರಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೈ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಕೇರ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಕವರ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ನೈಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಜರ್ಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅಕ್ಟೋಬರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಕವರೇಜ್ ನೌ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಟು ದ ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಾಲಿಟಿ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಜರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಮೂವ್ ಟು ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದ ಪುವರ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಆರೋಗ್ಯಶ್ರೀ ಅಂಬ್ರೆಲ್ಲ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಆರ್ ಕೋಡ್ ಆರ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಡ್ ಟು ದ ಎಲಿಜಿಬಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಷರೀಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರೋಗ್ಯಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರೋಗ್ಯ ಆಸರಾ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಪರ್ ಮಂತ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಅಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪೇಷಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ಜರಿ ಕೇರ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಕಾಂಪನ್ಸೇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೇರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ an amount of rupees 971.28 crores has been spent benefiting 15.65 lakh persons as a result of effective implementation of mother and child care services in the state there has been a phenomenal decline of 19% in the maternal mortality ratio which has steeply declined to 45 the state stood fourth at the national level as per the latest srs report and the state has already achieved the sdg target of 70 per 1 lakh live births well before the time of line of for the year 
with one doctor attending the PHC and the other attending the YSR village health clinic through 104 MMU vehicles on fixed day schedule to provide the health care services. My government is committed to reducing the infant mortality rate by strengthening neonatal care services. <coughs> to reduce the neonatal mortality, our government is undertaking expansion and strengthening of facilities like special newborn care units, MINI tribal special newborn, newborn care units, nutritional rehabilitation centers. Leveraging technology, better health care access is being provided to the citizens in the state through Dr. YSR Telemedicine. Total 2.83 crore teleconsultations have been made, have been done through telemedicine, which account for 35% of the total consultations in India the highest done by any state in the country. My government has launched a comprehensive program of Nadu Nedu for remodeling government hospitals, up upgradation of infrastructure facilities, and healthcare services across the state in a phased manner over a period of three years. As a part of this initiative, 10,032 YSR village health clinics, 528 urban health clinics, 1,124 PHCs, 121 CHS, CHCs, and 42 area hospitals are being upgraded. My government has already revamped the 108 ambulances and 104 mobile medical units with modern life-saving equipment. The village Health clinics positioned adjacent to the village ward secretariats provide primary health care to the needy at the grassroots level. To ensure that best medical care, my government is establishing 17 medical colleges in addition to the existing 11 medical colleges in the state with an outlay of 8,480 crores. Five of these 17 medi new medical colleges will start functioning from the academic year 2023-24. With the objective of reducing avoidable blindness from 1% to 0.3%, Dr. YSR Kanti Velugu scheme is being implemented in the state in six phases targeting specific population in each phase and to screen 5.60 crore population in the state with an estimated outlay of rupees 560.89 crores to holistically achieve the health objectives my government has decided to fill up all the vacant posts in health institutions in the state towards this end in all 48,639 vacant posts have been filled up. These include 3,899 specialists, 2,088 medical officers, 5,777 staff nurses, 13,540 ANMS, 10,032 mid-level health providers, 13,303 paramedical and support staff. All these efforts will surely minimize the out-of-pocket expenses of the poor and also bring significant improvements in the health parameters. Prioritizing sustainable development goals, my government is taking various innovative steps to improve the nutritional status of beneficiaries under Anganwadi services. My government has put in place several health and nutrition related schemes to make sure that state will achieve the global benchmarks and improve the performance under stunting, wasting and malnutrition. 
committed to achieving the SDGs well in time. My government has laid special focus on closely monitoring the anemia and malnutrition related indicators. Four of the eight high priority SDG related indicators being monitored at the highest level on a regular basis pertain to these key two parameters. My government has introduced YSR Sampurna Poshana and YSR Sampurna Poshana Plus schemes for supplementary nutrition through Anganwadi centers beside the Poshana Abhyan scheme of the Government of India. My government is adopting a convergence approach to improve the nutrition of pregnant women, lactating mothers and children through this holistic supplementary nutrition program. A total of 35.7 lakh beneficiaries have been supported. An amount of rupees 6,141 crores has been incurred on this program so far. My government is committed to provide permanent houses to all eligible people by 2024 by providing house sites and houses under Navaratnalu Pedal Andiriki Illu program. Under the program, 30.65 lakh house sites pattas were distributed in the name of women beneficiaries. The value of each such house site is to the tune of 5 to 10 lakhs. So far, 21.25 lakh houses have been sanctioned to the beneficiaries. 4.4 lakh have been completed and the remaining houses are at various stages of construction. It is also to be noted that all YSR Jagananna colonies are being developed by providing all the required infrastructure facilities like water, water supply, electricity, approach roads, internal roads, drains, and welcome arches. Infrastructure, infrastructure works worth rupees 32,909 crores are being planned in all, these, all the layouts. For the first time in India, all types of pensions under YSR pension Kanuka are being delivered on the first of every month at the doorsteps of the beneficiaries through village ward voluntary network. So far, an expenditure of rupees 66,823.79 crores has been incurred, benefiting 64.45 lakh persons every month. Every BPL weaver family who owns a handloom is provided with rupees 24,000 per annum to modernize its equipment under YSR Nethanna Nestam. Rupees 788.5 crore has been distributed to 81,783 weaver beneficiaries so far. The YSR Matsyakara Bharosa stands unique in the country where relief to fishermen is extended during the lean period. The relief provided to marine fishermen families during the fishing ban period has been enhanced from rupees 4,000 to rupees 10,000. And diesel subsidy is also enhanced from rupees 6 to rupees 9 per liter. So far, an amount of rupees 422 crores has been credited to 1.2 lakh eligible beneficiaries. Furthermore, the excretion to the family of any fisherman who dies in high seas has been increased from rupees 5 lakhs to rupees 10 lakhs. Through Jagananna Chedodu, a financial assistance of rupees 10,000 is given to the eligible fishermen, Nai Brahmins and tailors who have registered permanent or mobile establishments. An amount of rupees 927.49 crores has been directly credited into the accounts of 3.30 lakh beneficiaries under the scheme. 
social security insurance cover is being provided to unorganized sectors workers of the age group 18 to 70 years under YSR Bima program for accidental deaths, natural deaths, and full and partial disability incidents. So far, claims to a tune of rupees 500 crores has been dispersed during the last two years. An annual cash incentive of rupees 10,000 under YSR Vahana Mitra scheme is provided to all eligible driver come owners of autos, taxis, and maxi cabs to meet maintenance expenses. During the last four years, an amount of rupees 1,041 crores was distributed to 2.74 lakh beneficiaries. Through YSR Law Nestam, my government is providing a half yearly stipend of rupees 30,000 to eligible junior advocates. An amount of rupees 35.4 crores was distributed to 4,248 eligible junior advocates so far. To help street vendors in their effort to access working capital at affordable rates, my government is providing rupees 10,000 loan amount with zero percent interest under Jagananna Todu scheme. Under the scheme so far, 2,470.3 crore was distributed, dispersed to 15.31 lakh beneficiaries and the interest amount was also reimbursed. Now on women empowerment. My government has laid utmost emphasis on the empowerment and welfare of women. Recognizing the need for political empowerment of women, my government has provided 50% reservation for women in all local bodies. Further, further, by way of, by way, further, by way of an act, women have been provided with 50% reservation in all nominated posts and nominated works. Under the, under the YSR Asara, Under the YSR Asara, my government has helped the SHG women of rural and urban areas who had availed bank finance to meet their financial needs by reimbursing the entire loan amount outstanding as on 11-4-29 in four installments. An amount of rupees 12,758 crores was released in two installments to 78.74 lakh SHG women in both rural and urban areas. To absolve the women of the debt trap and free them from the financial burden, my government has introduced YSR Sunnavaddi scheme through which the interest amount on the loan will be reimbursed directly to the account of SHG. So far, an amount of rupees 3,615 crores was paid to 1.02 crore SHG women. Through YSR Cheyuta scheme, a financial assistance of rupees 75,000 is provided in four phases to all eligible women belonging to SC, ST, BC, and minorities in the age group of 45 to 60 years. At 18,750 per year, an amount of rupees 14,129 crores was dispersed in three installments to 26.7 lakh women members under the scheme. My government has devised a new scheme, YSR EBC Nestam, to extend financial assistance to women belonging to economically backward classes. 
Under the scheme, my government will provide financial assistance of rupees 45,000 to each woman beneficiary aged between 45 to 60 years at rupees 15,000 per annum for three years. So far, an amount of rupees 595.86 crores has been credited directly into the accounts of 3.94 lakh women. Under YSR Kapu Nestam, my government is providing financial assistance of rupees 75,000 in five phases to women who are in the age group of 45 to 60 years belonging to Kapu, Telaga, Ontari, and Balija Kas at rupees 15,000 per year. So far, an amount of rupees 1,500 crores was paid to 3.56 lakh women. To financially empower the eligible brides and their families, the government has significantly enhanced the incentive and introduced the YSR Kalyana Mastu for SC, ST, BC, minorities, other than Muslims differently abled and YSR Shadi Tofa for Muslim minorities. The The scheme, is, the scheme is implemented on saturation basis in a transparent manner through the Grama Ward Sachivalayams to ensure that poverty does not come in the way of education. Mothers who send their children to schools and educational institutions are supported by providing financial assistance in the form of various schemes like Amma Odi, Jagananna Vidya Devena, Deve, Devena, and Jagananna Vasati Devena. Also, all the house site pattas were given in the name of women beneficiaries and distributed to women beneficiaries only. My government has launched YSR Swetcha scheme on International Women's Day 2021 with an aim to ensure accessibility to good health and hygiene among adolescent girls and women. So far, an amount of rupees 25.33 crores has been spent on this program. To help women in distress, Disha app was launched by our government. Any, any, any woman, any woman in distress Wait, wait, wait. wait. Any woman in distress can either call police or by simply shaking the mobile, the police will come to her rescue within minutes. This app has received tremendous response with over 1.36 crores downloads till date and 1.11 crore registered users. As a comprehensive measure to address the issues that directly or indirectly concern women and girl child, for the first time, my government has presented gender budget during budget sessions 2021-22. Social justice now. Recognizing that social justice cannot be attained without political empowerment, my government has taken several measures to empower economically and socially deprived sections of the society. Within the Council of Ministers, within the Council of Ministers, 50% of the posts in the first round and 70% of the posts in 70, uh, second round were given to SC, ST, BC and minorities. Furthermore, out of five deputy CM posts, four posts, that is 80% were given to SC, ST, BC minorities. Within the Zilla Parishad chairman posts, within... Within the Zilla Parishad chairman posts, 
nine posts, that is 70 percent out of 13, were given to SC, ST, BC, and minorities. Furthermore, my government has ensured that among nominated posts and nominated works, 50 percent be reserved to SC, ST, BC, and minorities, and an act has been brought to this effect. Accordingly, out of 137 various corporation chairman posts, 58 percent were given to SC, ST, BC, and minorities. To look after the welfare of the backward classes and to implement the government schemes designed for BCs, 56 new BC corporations have been established, duly covering 139 castes. Three corporations were formed for SCs and one corporation has been formed for STs to effectively implement the programs of the government for these sections of the society. My government is implementing various other schemes that directly promote improvement and well-being of the underprivileged and vulnerable classes. These include providing free power to 15.14 lakh SC and 4.5 lakh ST households up to 200 units per month under the Jagjeevan Jyoti scheme. I feel very happy to mention that my government during the past 45 months has implemented several schemes in a transparent manner by transferring an amount of rupees 1.97 lakh crores through DBT mode directly into the bank accounts of the needy and intended beneficiaries. Now about sustainable agricultural production and consumption. Paul Chatfield had said and I quote, Agriculture is the noblest of the alchemy. Agriculture is the noblest of the alchemy, for it turns earth and even manure into gold, conferring upon its cultivator the additional reward of health." Unquote. Dear members, a resilient farming sector remained as the mainstay for the state economy during COVID times. My government will leave no stone unturned in making agriculture viable and profitable. Let me briefly highlight some of the schemes implemented by the state for, for the well-being of the farmers in the state. Establishment of 10,778 Raitu Bharosa Kendralu turned out to be a one-stop one -stop solution to all the agricultural needs along with e-crop booking facility that range from providing quality certified key farm inputs to enabling sale of end produce. One RBK is established in every village secretariat with the agriculture, horticulture, fisheries graduate. Further, with an objective of monitoring the prices of commodities daily at RBK, RBK level, and prioritizing procurements wherever and whenever necessary, my government is leveraging digital technologies through the usage of continuous monitoring of agricultural prices and procurement. An entire procurement process was re-engineered and digitalized. The e-crop booking put in place at the RBK level itself is acting as a single source for effective policy formulation and implementation of programs such as universal free crop insurance, input subsidy, interest-free crop loans, and procurement of agricultural produce at MSP, along with area-specific guidance for farmers. Further, kiosks are made available at the RBKs so that farmers can now place orders for farm inputs online for delivery at their doorstep an integrated call center with agri scientists in place is made available to advise farmers on various crop related issues. With all these initiatives and RBKs playing a central role with community hiring centers coming up at RBK level itself, promotion of crop diversification, migration of millets production 
and switching over to organic farming gradually have all resulted in the sector demonstrating commendable performance. Under the YSR Raitu Bharosa PM Kisan financial assistance of Rs. 13,500 is extended to the farmer in three installments per year for a period of five years, amounting to Rs. 67,500 as an input support, and my government is the only one to extend the scheme to landless tenant farmers, ROFR cultivators, and cultivators of endowment lands. So far, under this scheme, 52.38 lakh farmer families were benefited with an amount of rupees 27,063 crores. To protect all farmers cultivating agriculture and horticulture crops, Universal crop insurance is implemented wherein farmers' share of premium is paid by the state government for all crops notified under the YSR free crop insurance scheme. An amount of Rs. 6,872 crores crop insurance claim was paid to 44.55 lakh farmers so far. Niti Aayog has recognized Dr. YSR free crop insurance implementation as a role model for other states to emulate. One hundred forty seven YSR agri testing labs are being established at the constituency level, eleven labs at district level, four regional coding centers at zonal level, with YSR Polambadi programs being organized for farmers' empowerment. The agriculture supply chain is all set to undergo massive, massive transformation. Under YSR Sunnavaddi Panta Runalu scheme, interest subsidy for crop loans up to rupees 1 lakh is transferred directly to the accounts of the farmers who adhere to loan repayment timelines. So far, 1,834.55 crores interest subsidy, including past dues, was extended to 73.88 lakh farmers. An amount of 1,911.78 crores has been compensated by my government to 22.22 lakh farmers towards crop loss incurred due to natural disasters by way of input subsidy as immediate relief in the same season. To reduce, to reduce post-harvest losses and improve quality of output, 1,492 post-harvest infrastructure like integrated pack houses, cold storages, minimal processing units, ripening chambers are being established with a capacity of 6.50 lakh metric tons. Recognizing the need to support families, recognizing the need to support families whose loss lost their bread earning farmers due to distress, ex gratia to family of any farmer who commits suicide has been enhanced to 7 lakhs. Under YSR Jalakala, 2 lakh free bore wells are planned to be drilled in a span of four years within a financial outlay of 2,340 crores, benefiting more than 18 lakh farmers. During, during financial year 2022-23, so far, 6,931 bore wells were drilled with an expenditure of 188.84 crores and 9,629 beneficiaries were benefited. Nine hours of quality electricity is being provided for agriculture free of cost. Under the scheme, an amount of rupees 27,800 crores have been given as subsidy so far. Government is also providing electricity on subsidized cost to aqua farmers up to 10 acres 
so far an expenditure of 2647 crores has been paid as subsidy to aqua farmers my government my, my government my gar all it right. my government has devised several crop diversification plans from paddy and other cereals to millets with a specific calendar of events marking the UNO's declaration of 2023 as the international year of millets my government has identified horticulture livestock and fishery sectors as growth engines that are driving the agricultural economy of the state the state ranks first in productivity of oil palm papaya lime cocoa tomato coconut and chilies second in mango sweet orange and turmeric in india and stood third in the implementation of micro irrigation at the national level in area coverage out of top 10 districts in the country two districts are from andhra pradesh another sector allied to agriculture and contributing largely to the state economy is livestock sector my government has taken initiatives to increase the income of farmers through produ productivity enhancement of animals ensuring remunerative prices to the livestock products and making the fodder resources available to the farmers the state continues to be the best performer in the country in the production of egg meat and milk the state stands at the at first in egg production 2645 crore eggs second in meat production 10.262 10.26 lakhs metric tons and fifth in milk production 152.03 lakh metric tons in the country the services of the services of dr ysr sanchara pashu arogya seva with 340 mobile veterinary clinics were launched in two phases with an outlay of 252.91 crores through dr ysr spas the government is providing emergency veterinary care services the veterinary services are being provided to livestock farmers at their doorsteps immediately on receiving a call to 1962 dairy development is accorded dairy development is accorded priority through schemes like jaganna pala velluva for revival of milk cooperatives to strengthen the dairy sector in the state go up amul project with an outlay of with an outlay of 1362 crores is provided as dairy infrastructure development fund loan through ncdc under the ysr cheyuta asara scheme my government is providing financial assistance of rupees 75000 to each sc st bc women beneficiary who had procured milch animals sheep and goat units about 2.6 2.49 lakh women of 45 to 56 years of age are being provided financial assistance under the jagananna jeeva kranti patakam implemented with a project cost of rupees 1868.63 crores fishery sector fishery sector in andhra pradesh with abundant scope for value addition and export potential has been given a greater attention by my government the fishery sector providing livelihood to 26.5 lakh population in the state accounts for nearly 30% of the total fish production in the country 35% of the total national seafood products amounting to rupees 20000 20 crore is contributed by andhra pradesh state friends it is a matter of pride that 
ఆంధ్ర ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ గవర్నమెంట్ స్టుడ్ ఫస్ట్ ఇన్ గుడ్ గవర్నెన్స్ ఇండెక్స్ ఫర్ ద ఇయర్ ట్వంటీ 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 వన్ అనౌన్స్ రీసెంట్లీ బై ద గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఫర్ అగ్రికల్చర్ ఫర్ అగ్రికల్చర్ అండ్ అలైడ్ సెక్టర్స్ ఫర్ అచీవింగ్ ఫినామినల్ గ్రోత్ గ్రోత్ రేట్ అట్ లెవెన్ పాయింట్ త్రీ పర్సెంట్ ఇన్ అగ్రికల్చర్ ట్వెల్వ్ పాయింట్ త్రీ పర్సెంట్ ఇన్ హార్టికల్చర్ లెవెన్ పాయింట్ సెవెన్ పర్సెంట్ ఇన్ అనిమల్ హస్బెండ్రీ అండ్ టెన్ పాయింట్ త్రీ పర్సెంట్ ఇన్ మీట్ ప్రొడక్షన్ మై గవర్నమెంట్ ఎన్విసేజెస్ టు ఇంప్రూవ్ ద గ్రీన్ కవర్ టు థర్టీ త్రీ పర్సెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద కరెంట్ ట్వంటీ సిక్స్ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద జియోగ్రఫికల్ ఏరియా ఇన్ కన్ఫార్మిటీ విత్ నేషనల్ ఫారెస్ట్ పాలసీ to create a sustainable living space for the citizens of the state massive plantation under jagananna pacha toranam was carried out during 2022 23 by planting 3.5 crore seedlings involving all line departments people from all walks of life and by converging funds under various schemes due to these efforts andhra pradesh state as per isfr 2021 india state of forest report stood first in terms of increasing the forest cover by 646.9 square kilometers to develop climatic resi- resilient cities by managing and expanding urban lung spaces in urban and peri urban areas for smart clean and healthy cities nagarvanam scheme is being implemented under the scheme during 2023-24 it is proposed to develop nagarvanam's temple eco parks at 23 places now about clean water and sanitation water is fundamental to life livelihood food security and sustainable development the irrigation projects taken up under jalayagnam program no are under progress and program to be completed on priority to irrigate cultivable lands provide drinking water and cater to industrial needs the works on polavaram pula subbaya veligonda projects the works of polavaram pula subbaya veligonda projects rayalaseema drought mitigation project and other ongoing projects are under progress <coughs> out of out of 54 jalayagnam irrigation projects 14 projects have been completed and projects two projects are partially completed the remaining the remaining projects are under progress an action plan is chalked out for completion of these projects in a phased manner in the next 4 years in the governing council meeting of the niti ayog held recently my government has sought support for a quick approval of the revised cost estimates and timely completion of polavaram irrigation project which was declared as national project overall overall execution of works component is already completed up to 70.07% of the main dam including canal works and 22.16 of the la and rr works are completed under the polavaram project 7.2 lakh acres of new ayakat would be created and 23.5 lakh acres ayakat would be stabilized along with 960 mw hydro power 
generation facility. My government is committed to providing every person in the rural areas with adequate safe drinking water on sustainable basis and ensuring that every rural person has excess of 70 LPCD by 2024 in convergence with Jal Jeevan mission. Plans have been devised to ensure that safe and piped water is available at required LPCD in urban areas also. Know about Swachh Bharat Mission. The state is now moving towards implementation of ODF plus activities as per SBM G Phase 2 guidelines with an objective of transforming all the villages into clean and model villages. Under the Clean Andhra Pradesh project, AP state is moving ahead with an aim of achieving litter-free, garbage-free, visually clean villages and promoting sustainable sanitary practices in rural Andhra Pradesh. To achieve this objective, Rs. 220.82 crores was incurred during 2022-23. Solid and liquid waste management is a major component in the SBMG Phase 2 program to keep the villages clean and improve health and wealth conditions in the rural areas. 70% of the door-to-door -door garbage collection is taking place and 10,443 solid waste processing centers are functioning in the villages. For effective implementation of solid waste management activities, Rs. 417.76 crores is proposed for setting up of a plastic waste management units, one, each in, one in each mandal, and related procurements. Andhra Pradesh has been ranked 7th in the Swachh Sarvekshan 2022. At the national level, in the above, 1 lakh population category, 3 cities, GVMC, Vijayawada and Tirupati, marked in the top 10. Vijayawada Municipal Corporation is awarded as the cleanest state national capital. Vishakapatnam is awarded as the clean big city in the 10 to 40 lakh population category. Pulivendula is awarded for innovation and best practices under South Zone category. Vishakapatnam is awarded as the top impact creation creator city in the million plus city category. Now about affordable and clean energy. In the power sector, our endeavor should be to reduce the cost of power and encourage renewable energy. We have recognized that improvement of financial and operational health of the distribution utilities is essential for the sustainability of the sector. My government has recently entered an arrangement with the SECI for supply of power from 7,000 megawatt facility making available 17,000 MU per annum at a very attractive rate of Rs. 2.49 per kilowatt. The power from this source is envisaged for the supply of power to agriculture during daytime. Further, I am happy to draw the attention of this House to the commencement operations of 800 megawatt of Sri Damodaram Sanjeevaya Thermal Power Station at Krishnapatnam and completion of 800 megawatt of Narla Tatarao Thermal Power Station at Vijayawada. My government has formulated a proactive policy with respect to reverse pumping technology, which enables natural energy storage and which supports in mitigating the intermittency associated with renewable energy. With the twin objective of safeguarding the distribution utilities and ensuring that free power is made available to the farmers in a hassle-free manner, my government is installing smart meters for agriculture, agriculture connections and is also finalizing plans for providing agricultural subsidy through DBT mode directly to farmers. Now about industry innovation and infrastructure. It's a moment of pride that my government successfully organized Global Investor Summit at Vishakapatnam. On 3rd and 4th March 2023, the International Congregation was highlighted the best efforts of the government to attract investors. The two-day event demonstrated not only the credibility of the government, 
but also the faith reposed by national international investors in the state leadership the phenomenal response of the investors from 25 countries and from 30 corporate giants as well as the host of others to invest in the state itself is a testimony for a conducive business friendly environment in the state in all 378 memorandums of understanding were signed during the summit with a total commitment of 13.42 lakh crores and a generation of over 6 lakhs jobs across 16 key sectors. A significant investment commitment of Rs. 9,57,112 9, crores with a potential employment generation of 1.80 lakh persons was in the renewable energy sector. The other major promising sectors include petrochemicals, IT and IT-enabled sectors, mining industries and others. My government is committed to capitalize on the natural and human resources available in the state and make the city of Vishakapatnam as an industrial hub of the state. The advantages that Andhra Pradesh has showcased are the availability of robust infrastructure, skilled manpower, inherent advantages such as 974-kilometer-long coastline, abundant mineral resources, and so forth. To achieve rapid industrialization of the state, through competitive industrial policies, my government has introduced the AP Industrial Development Policy 2020-2023, identifying 10 thrust areas to propel economic growth, with manufacturing as the high priority sector that would create large scale employment. 69 large and mega industries under the active implementation with an investment of rupees 1.3 lakh crores and to provide employment to 1.5 lakh persons. Most of the units are likely to commence production in, a, in the very near future. My government is granting all permissions through the single desk system within 21 days for establishment and running of industries. Friends, the proactive policies have resulted in Andhra Pradesh securing first position consecutively for three years in the ease of doing business rankings. I also wish to emphasize that rankings were based on feedback from the stakeholders. To nurture the growth of MSMEs, my government has decided to support and monitor the implementation of one-time restructuring of MSME loan scheme under an umbrella program, Dr. Vyasar Navodayam. MSME cluster development program is facilitating the creation of state-of-the-art infrastructure facilities. In the MSME sector, 1.52 lakh units have been established with an investment of Rs. 19,115 crores, providing employment to over 13.63 lakh persons. Under MSME restart program, Rs. 2,086 crores worth incentives were given to 23,236 MSMEs so far. Andhra Pradesh has improved its exports, perf exports performance from rank 7 in 2019-20 to rank 4 in 2021 with an increase in exports to USD 16.8 billion in financial year 2021. The state contributes 5.8 percent to national exports and we aspire to double our exports by 2030 increasing our share to 10 percent. Now about strategic infrastructure. My government is planning to develop Andhra Pradesh as a logistic hub and gateway to Southeast Asia. The state is keen to leapfrog economic development by encouraging industries in the vicinity of ports and harbors. We have six operational ports and we are also developing four more ports at Ramaya Patnam, Bhavana Padu, Kakinada and Machili Patnam and also constructing nine fishing harbors across the state in two phases. 
my government is striving to operationalize three major industrial corridors, Vizag Chennai Industrial Corridor, Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor, and Hyderabad Bangalore Industrial Corridor. The corridor's develop development will strengthen connectivity to the existing industries and facilitate setting up of new ones. Now about rural and urban connectivity. My government is committed to ensuring connectivity to all unconnected habitations through AP Rural Road Project with an estimated cost of rupees 4,994 crores. 992 kilometers of BT roads were laid at the cost of 502 crores under PMGSY during the last one year. My government is planning to complete 174 roads and 21 bridges of length of 1,236 kilometers during this year. Roads and Building Department has taken up 5,181 kilometers length of road works, which comprises of new connectivity, improvement repair, improvement repairs pertaining to all categories of roads with an expenditure of rupees 2,173 crores. Further, with an assistance from new development bank, 1,260 kilometers of road have been taken up with an estimated cost of rupees 3,013 crores to provide double lane connectivity from district headquarters to mandal headquarters and mandal headquarters to adjoining mandal headquarters from the existing single lane intermediate lane roads which are having traffic intensity of more than 2,000 passenger carrying units. Now, skilling and employment. Emphasizing on the importance of employment generation, my government developed a system to meet the occupational needs of public and private sector as well. The government has passed a legislation reserving 75% of the employment for locals in the industries and factories that are set up in the state. Further, in the last 45 months, my government has provided 2.13 lakh permanent jobs, 45,871 contract jobs, and 3.72 lakh outsourcing other jobs. A total of 6.31 lakh jobs. The salaries of 3.08 lakh outsourcing honorarium-based employees were enhanced. All contractual employees were also provided with minimum time scale. For enhancing employability skills of students to make them job ready, placement linked and industry relevant short term skill development courses are offered. The key target is providing training under skill development for students and unemployed with substantial enhancing of the placement rate. Towards this direction, in order to design the courses as per demand and to ensure 75% of placements, my government has proposed to establish a skill university and 25 world-class multi-skill centers in 25 parliamentary con constituencies under YSR multi-skill development centers in two phases. For creation of rural employment, 69.90 lakh wage seekers belonging to 42.66 lakh households were provided wage employment incurring an expenditure of rupees 6,315.13 crores under Manregas. Of this, an amount of rupees 3,869.51 crore was towards unsealed wage component and rupees 2,312.09 crore was towards skilled wages and material components. 73,725 households completed 100 days of wage employment during financial year 2022-23. Andhra Pradesh is the first state in the country which has undertaken a comprehensive resurvey after 100 years using the most modern and advanced survey technologies in 17,584 villages through the 
ತ್ರೂ ದ ವೈಎಸ್ಆರ್ ಜಗನಣ್ಣ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಭೂ ಹಕ್ಕು ಮರಿಯು ಭೂ ರಕ್ಷಾ ಪಾಥಕಂ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಓನರ್ಸ್ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟೀಸ್ ಎನ್ಶೋರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಭೂ ಹಕ್ಕು ಪತ್ರಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಬೌಂಡ್ರೀಸ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಭೂ ರಕ್ಷಾ ಸರ್ವೆ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಡಿಸೆಂಬರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಭೂ ಹಕ್ಕು ಪತ್ರಾಲು ವೇರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಫೋರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಏಟ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಓನರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಡ್ಮೈರಬಲ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ವೈಡ್ ಎಕ್ಲೈಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೀತಿ ಆಯೋಗ ಮಾರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ಎಹೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಟ್ರಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಮೈ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಅಪ್ ಎ ಹಿಸ್ಟೋರಿಕಲ್ ಮೂವ್ ಥ್ರೂ ರೀಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸಿಂಗ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ದ ರೆವೆನ್ಯೂ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಜೀರೋ ಏಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ದ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ದ ಕಾಮನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಸಿವ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಟಿವ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟುವಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ರೀಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಮೂವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿವಿಡೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇವೋಕ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಎಮಂಗ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ with the genuine intention to help people my government has been implementing spandana program to redress the public grievances with high priority and more importantly with a human face there is positive feedback in the way the citizens grievances are being redressed and this program is widely acclaimed with accolades from niti ayog with an aim to create awareness among public public on various welfare scheme being implemented by the government my government has initiated gadappa gadappa ku mana prabhutvam program under this program under this program mlas and public representatives visit every household across the state in their respective jurisdiction 